It's time for Weekend Review, where Comic Book Man looks back, usually with regret. What you talking about, Willie? I know what you need. That's a Weekend Review. Looking back on the week that was, September 8th, 2010. Hey folks, how you doing? Comic Book Man here. Welcome to my video outhouse. It's time for Weekend Review, and this is the Weekend Review for September the 9th. 2010. This is your bookend to Ship Shape. If you watch Ship Shape, we try to tell you what's coming up in the following week. This is the opposite end. We're at the end of the week and we're looking back at what happened. So you put the two together and you got a pretty good view of how the week went. How was your week, Bo? My week wasn't bad. It you started out like crap, but it ended up decent. It started off like crap, but it ended up decent. Well, that's great. I got sleep. That's great. That's I got to sleep on Tuesday. That's always a good thing. You know who had an okay week this week also? Who? You know who? Who? Oh. Dakin had an okay oh, week. Oh, everybody this loves Dakin. Dakin had an okay week. Dakin is Dakin has a plan. Dakin wants to take over the world. Yes. And he's going to do it with two claws that come out of the back of his wrist. Dakin, God bless you. Think no, as I said before, think no small plans. Make no small plans. Take over the world with two claws that come out of the back of he's your also head. Got You're the, there. He's I'm going to take over the world with flatulence. He also myself. has an amazing ability to convince people to do things and, and like him automatically, even though he's an evil son of a gun. You like me, don't you? Yeah. You, you know, like me. You really like me. Before funny, he was cool, even though he was an evil son of a gun. So, what's going on with Dakin? What have you heard? Well, you know, Dakin's going to be hanging around. Uh, actually, Wolverine went to hell the week before yes, the ship. Yes, he did. Uh, this is the first issue of Dakin. Uh, you would assume that, that Dakin would be relatively happy about the fact that his old man's in hell. Apparently, in this in this issue, you get kind of get a hint in the future issues. He's not happy his dad's in hell. He's actually going to try to get his dad out of hell. Why? He, he doesn't he's like, like his he's dad. He's like the guy. He, he doesn't he's like guy. his dad, but he doesn't want his dad to be screwed for something, so he's going to try to get his dad out of hell. Well, what else is a son for? That, that's, what a good boy. That's fatherly love. What a good boy. Oh, by the way, Wolverine is is the hero of the month here at Alternate yes, Reality. Yes, he is. That means twenty five percent off all the trades, twenty five percent off all the uh, back issues. He's featured as the hero of the week every week this month long. So you pick a bunch of Wolverine comics for a buck, and we do stuff like talk about him here. So, and on my Facebook site, on Alternate Reality's Facebook site, we're pushing the hell out of Wolverine all month long. So this is Wolverine's month. Yay! Don't forget it. Also this week, we had Invaders Now, Invaders Now, number one, which shipped. This is a five-issue miniseries that's coming from not only Marvel, but Dynamite. It's a little well. team-up they've got going on. Christoph Gage is writing it. Uh, Alex Ross has kind of come up with a general idea. They also worked on the Avengers, Def or worked, Avengers Invaders Christoph, comic that was yeah, out Christoph last year. worked on that 12-issue limited series that came out. This is basically a follow-up to that mm -hmm. because the Invaders are now hanging around the regular Marvel age. That means the older Invaders and the newer Invaders because the team will be hanging out with Union Jack. The original Union Jack no longer with us, the new one's around, and he'll be hanging out with the old farts that used to be the invaders. Okay. How are they? And Toro, and also Toro and Human Torch, who apparently got their powers back and got resurrected from the dead. Well, Toro had his own mini series, which is also from Dynamite and Marvel, and uh, and um, uh, uh, Jim Hammond. He's been kicking around. Jim Hammond's been, he's been hanging been kicking around. around Marvel for a while. He was hanging around the Avengers for a while because Alex Ross really has a fascination for this. So if you're looking for Alex Ross work over at Marvel. That's what you're gonna get. That's what you're gonna get because Alex Ross cares about Silver Age and Golden Age stuff. He doesn't care all that much about stuff that happened past 1975, nope. 1978, nope. there thereabouts. He cares a lot about 60s and early to mid 70s characters and stuff over at DC and at Marvel. And so this stuff is right up his alley. And at Dynamite. And at Dynamite. It's part of the Alex Ross universe. Part of the Alex Ross. Three universe. different companies, one universe. Have you taken a look at this book yet? Uh, I've seen the cover. I've read what's going on. It, you know, and if you look at the cover, the cover's really, really nice. The interior art is not as nice, but the story's okay. I gave this to Sweet Dan Sweet to review. At some point, his review will be posted up, uh, and you'll be able to read his review. I am assuming, and Dan always talks about the art and everything he does because he always gives he always gives a section of his reviews, whether it's print or video to the artist, and I have a feeling Dan will have many interesting things to say about the art in this book. Well, the, the basic problem is whenever you have a book with an Alice Ross cover, the interior art's never going to look like that, so you're yeah. going to have an issue the moment you open the book. But mm -hmm. you can stare at the covers all day. Another nice bit of pretty art that came out this week was this book, Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook wrote and drew one of the three stories that make up this issue. Weird World Tales, part of uh, DC's, um, I guess it's maybe an annual revival of war books. Well, DC's doing... Copyright DC's doing specifically. five first issues on war books all this month long. They're weekly books. Last week was Sergeant Rock. This week was... or Our, our, Army, at war our Army at War featuring Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock. This was uh, Weird War, obviously. And, and coming, coming, coming up, up is, is um, um, Our Fighting Forces, our fighting I think. Forces. 
our fighting forces. Uh, so, what's up with Darwin? What do you know about Darwin? Well, Darwin likes uh, older stuff. Darwin, as I mentioned on Facebook, is really fu is really inspired by people like Alex Nino and older type people who work on stuff like this. This book is coming out basically about a week after Darwin had this nice little rant about the fact that neither DC nor Marvel does kids' comics, specifically for kids, and they need to stop appealing to older fans and start to focus specifically on younger fans. There was a video that, uh, I don't know if Darwin so much did, he was sitting behind his table and a guy taped it. I assume Darwin gave him his permission. It was a nice rant. It, it, he did a nice rant. I posted it on my Facebook page. Had a lot of response back from it. Uh, personally, I have no problem with everything that Darwin said in, in his little rant, and I think he's correct about all of it, but... Uh, well, it, it'll be it great. Rubs, it, I'm sure it rubbed many people the wrong way. It rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Uh, Darwin Cook really hasn't done any kid... I mean, this isn't a kids-oriented no. book. Uh, the last of the stuff he's done over at DC, The Spirit, none of them are kids-oriented. It's nice of him to say that, but... Darwin's not doing books for kids. so he's No, talking... but that doesn't mean he doesn't have an opinion on it. He had, well, Darwin has an opinion on everything. That's the nice thing about Darwin That doesn't Cook. mean he can't have an opinion. I don't do kids' books either, but I sell them, and I have a definite opinion about kids' books. You know, I mean, you can. All, there's no problem with having an opinion on it. No, I have no problem with it. And opinion. Darwin's a respected creator, so I mean, he, his his opinion should be given a little weight. Yeah, kids of, tom of uh, today are the adults of tomorrow. Well, you want to keep this genre alive. I would. You I want would to try appealing to kids. It's well, not I would, a bad idea. I would suggest that the reason why kids don't buy comics is because comics are sold in drugstores and everywhere, like they were when he and I were kids. Well, it has more to do with that. I mean, kids are busy on the internet and playing Pokemon and, playing and doing a thousand games. other right, things right. that they weren't doing when we were right, kids. Right. But I'll tell you what: your parents could do is your parents could walk into a store, buy a handful of these comics, and give them to and their parents. Kids. Do that. So and they do, do here yeah, at Alternate Reality. Do. I have parents coming in and here all the time with their kids, trying to get them to buy comics, and I have a big kids section here at Alternate Reality because, just for that reason. I mean, most kids of our era, you know, learn how to read by reading comics. That's how I started. By the, by the way, it's a little side note. Wherever you're watching this at, whatever part of the country you're watching it, I assume that you read comics and I assume that you buy them every week. If the comic book store you go to doesn't carry kids' books, talk to the guy behind the counter and ask him why. Because not only is it a market out there, which he could make some money off of, and he's not going to make a fortune off it, but he can make some money off it, and everybody could use an extra dollar or two in this market. But also, you're helping to build the next generation of readers. So if you go to a store where you don't ever see any kids' comics around the store anyplace, ask the guy who owns it why, okay? And find out what his good reason is. You know, if he starts talking to you about Wolverine and the X-Men, that's your good reason why he doesn't. Anyway... Getting back to the week in review. Batman. Uh, this ship this week, Batman 703, and we're coming up on the return of Bruce Wayne. Yes, this is this is actually the prelude to Bruce Wayne the Way Home. Uh, it was officially announced in like, the New York Post and the New York Times that when Bruce Wayne comes back that you'll have two people wearing the Batman outfit. Mm -hmm. Dick Grace is not taking the outfit off, so this guy will still be roaming around, and Bruce will be wearing a Batman outfit, which looks a little different than this, which is the yellow symbol. The plan is for DC in November to make Batman more of an international thing, and so Bruce Wayne will spend most of his time hanging out overseas instead of living in Gotham City. He'll be using the Bruce Wayne identity as an advantage instead of a negative. Mm -hmm. Oh, good for him. Okay. Uh, moving on to outside of comics, at least that's I assume where we're going. Sandman. Sandman officially announces a TV series on the w, on the CW by Eric Kripke, which we guy, announced last week. Yeah, we last announced. Week he's day. the guy who worked on Supernatural. Now JR doesn't like Supernatural, but JR's never watched Supernatural. I don't have any use for Supernatural either, and I'm afflicted with it almost every day at home. But and I, not by my choice. <laughs> I it, it'll be basically it's a it's a series that CW is doing because they need a superhero story superhero series in his or comic book related series because Smallville is going off the yes, air. Yes. So, uh, Sandman actually appeals and more to television than movies because you've got multiple characters so you can focus on them and others. And, it, and it's going to be on the CW so yes it may be a little younged up because HBO had a shot at it and said they had no interest in it. No cable in company has had any interest in it at all. That's why the CW said let's do it. Warner should have said, hey, we make movies, we have an interest in it, why don't we do a series of movies like the Harry Potter films out of it? Uh, they tried that. Of, and they well, they work. didn't try anything, because yeah. I never heard anything Because Well, the only thing you do have is you got the death of high cost of living, which apparently at some point is going to show up. This thing right here, this thing right here, uh, it was announced, and you're about to talk about it, it was announced that they're having a second season of this that'll be 13 episodes long, and as soon as that was announced, within 48 hours, a Sandman announcement was made. What's up with this? Uh, the, the movie. 
the, the first announcement was that they would be making a second season of Walking Dead, which hasn't debuted on AMC yet. It debuts in October. Right. Frank Darabont, the guy behind this, says, uh, no, there has not been a second season announced. I'm still putting the first season together yet. Yes, I would love to do more, but there has been no indication from AMC of a yes or no. They have approved the next couple seasons of Breaking Bad. They have approved other seasons of Rubicon. Walking Dead has not been approved for a second season yet, but it's likely to happen. If you watch all six episodes of Walking Dead in October, if you don't watch it, there won't be a second season. Okay. Uh, and that's about it. We're done. We're finished. We're out of here. We have no more Week in Review stuff. We had a couple of things we're going to cover, but it ain't happening this week. We don't week. have time. It we don't have time. time. But you can read or see more Weeks in Reviews and read his news on all sorts of stuff at the store's website. And where's the store's website at? Sarah knows www.myalternatrally.com It's the website your grandmother used to make. So stop off the store's website and check out all of his news. And until next time, this is Comic Book Man. And Bo. Saying, bye! The alternate reality hero of the month this month is Wolverine. That's right. The man who's the best he is at what he does is going to be 25% off all month long here at Alternate Reality. All of his soft covers, all of his hard covers, all of his essentials. Every Wolverine trade paperback in the place is 25% off all month long. And uh, our Hero of the Week sale, which is every week, will feature Wolverine all month long. So there'll be a bunch of Wolverine comic books that'll be a buck each all month long here at Alternate Reality. So like Wolverine, we're the best we are at what we do, and that's save you money. <laughs>